Welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here. Today I went to one of my favorite places, Harbor Freight, and I picked up one of those 10 by 17 portable garages. And the reason I did that is because realistically, I'm not gonna be building a lean-to or any kind of structure in the next year or so at least. And I wanna keep my implements out of the weather for this winter. Last year, I tarped my wood chipper, I tarped my rototiller, and that works fine, but I saw these online and actually a friend of mine has one and I thought you know what that's not too bad for two hundred dollars so I picked one up I'm gonna erect it right here behind me so we'll see how it goes so stick around welcome to my cluttered garage you know I'm really glad you're here yeah now I have never put one of these things together before but I watched some videos online I think they say you can do it in about an hour uh, that seems a little bit ambitious, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I picked a spot here behind me. It's relatively flat. I don't have a lot of high and dry and flat areas here. Uh, in the wintertime, things get pretty muddy and pretty wet, and they stay that way until about May or June. So this area should be okay if I don't have to access it a lot throughout the wintertime. And again, I'm going to put the rototiller in there first. That's going to go all the way in the back and obviously I won't use that until next spring, so that should be just fine. So my idea here is that I'm gonna till up the area first because even though it looks pretty flat, I wanna till it up, loosen up the soil, and that way I can rake it out, kinda of level it if I need to, and I don't know if that's gonna make a mess or if that's gonna make it better, but that's my plan. So here's my idea for these eight blocks. There are four sets of struts or supports that hold this garage up. So that means there are eight feet along the sides. And some folks use four by fours or blocks of wood under there and they bolt this garage down to that. Um, but I was thinking that for the weight of these blocks, that if I can place a block under each one of those feet, and I got some Tapcon screws to put in there. That would add the weight needed. It would raise it up off the ground four inches. I think there are flaps on the side that allow you to be above ground just a little bit. So I don't think it's gonna raise it up so that anything will get underneath as far as you know a lot of rain or wind or anything. Uh, plus, I plan to take wood chips once we, once we start chipping up all those big limbs and spread wood chips inside. And that should make a nice kind of surface bed for the equipment, whatever you want to call it. I've showed you this trick before, but if you don't have a knife to cut these bands, just flip them over and from the back side, pull the, the back of the tab and they pop right off every time. One thing to note, this is a very heavy package. So although I'm here by myself, it's probably recommended to have two people to assemble this. I mean, two is always better than one, but I'm here by myself, so I'm gonna do it by myself. Okay. Close enough. Well, as much as I hate to do it, I'm gonna read these instructions. Send Bill to Big Enos Burdett. B B E R B U R. Burdett. B B E R B U R. B. Hell, I got to go. All right. So essentially, it's saying assemble the roof structure first, the the roof uh, truss, and then assemble the poles for the side walls. And you know the parts are numbered. I think it's going to make sense. I may have to reference this once in a while just to look up a. A number to make sure I have the right fitting with the right pipe but other than that it looks pretty simple all right so I need two five dash ones two six dash ones three number threes eight number twos two number six dash twos and four number five dash twos got it
Well, would you look at that? We are off to a great start. There's the peak of the roof. One, two, three, and four. Let's start with this one. Where's the camera? The instructions do say that you may need a rubber mallet, not included. And it looks as though I'm gonna need a rubber mallet. Well, look what I found. A non-rubber mallet. It's a dead blow hammer made out of plastic, so kind of close to a rubber mallet. And this is not a how-to video, and it's certainly not a how-to-do-it-right video. Little twistation action as you're tapping seems to do the trick. All right, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side with four number twos along there. All these pieces have little plastic end caps, which is pretty nice to protect these things. I mean, they're being shipped all the way from China, I'm sure. Come on, come on, twisting, there we go. No mallet needed for that one. All right, just work my way down. One dash one in the middle. Maybe I should skip one. I think I should skip one. <clears throat> there we go. Get the dirt out of there. Put that back. What is with this butterfly? You trying to make me feel better, little butterfly? Trying to make me happy? Well, it's working, so cut it out. Okay, now there is some nutting and bolting that you're gonna have to do here. Some wrenching. The, uh, the foot just has a little cotter pin that goes through it, or a pin with a cotter pin. So that just goes like that. Sorry for the dirt. This was really probably not smart to do this here in the loose soil. But we stick that pin in there, and then on the other side, just gets a little cotter pin. Yeah, you're gonna need a ladder too. Unless you get really lucky. Oh my gosh. And just like that, we are assembled. Friends, we have assembled here today at Portable Garage. I think the one thing that would make this project go easier would be if you really leveled out the area first and you should assemble it right where you want it to be. I made the mistake of assembling it off to the side thinking I could drag it into place and I've got four by fours in the back now to kind of jack it up to keep the pieces together. I think it's gonna hold itself together once I get all the tarps on and the front and the back and the, and the cover. But for now, it just keeps, every time I put one piece in, another piece pulls out. It's a little frustrating. But the next step that they're telling you to do is to assemble the front and the back, the door and the back of it. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll see if we can start to get this thing to hold itself together. And I'm gonna slide it into place. Finally get it together, and then they ask you to bang it apart. All right.
Now you have these ratchets that attach to the straps around the front and the back covers and you use these to tighten them up. Kind of clever. I am removing these bolts that I put in earlier because I did not follow directions properly and these number four poles actually get slid through the tarp and added afterwards. Nice job. Should have been a cowboy. Well, when your son comes to visit, you get an extra hand. Sliding the poles through. There it goes. Nice. This is actually a pretty smart design because these are adjustable so you can pull it down to tighten up the tarp. Now the sides are held in place with the same ratchet strap design. You tighten it up on each side and it kind of wraps it around the front, wraps it around the back just a little bit. And I gotta say, if I were an impatient man, I would have quit a long time ago and said this thing is a piece of junk. It kept falling apart while I was trying to put it together. But the thing is, once you get it together and you start tightening things down and tightening the rapid ratchet straps up, it kind of holds itself together. And now that I'm at this point, I'm getting pretty impressed. Oh, hi, Hotch. How are you? Where you been? You feel cool, you must have come in from inside or come out from inside. I missed you. Oh, hi, Soph. I missed you too. Good to see you. Good to see you, Soph. Good to see you. Okay, can I have that ratchet strap behind you, please? Thank you, right behind you. Thank you. Well, I'll be darned. That ain't bad. I'll tell you what. For $200, this thing is pretty big and pretty impressive. It's actually made better than I expected. Now, I purchased the extended warranty with this portable garage. I'm not usually a fan of extended warranties. I kind of think they're a little bit scammy. And rightfully, I mean, they're, they're intended so that, so that you don't use them. Or the intention of the of the retailer is that you're probably not going to need that extended warranty which is why they can sell it to you and make money with it but i thought you know this thing is going to be sitting outside and the warranty covers anything that happens to it if a branch falls on it and tears the cover if the pipes get bent anything at all so i thought the two-year warranty for 49 dollars which is only what two dollars a month might be worth it and if i don't use it you know fifty dollars lost isn't so bad but, you know, is there a chance in the next two years that we could have a storm that could damage this thing? It's very possible. So in this case, I went for the warranty. So now that this thing is all together, I think I can move it all by myself. I'll just pick it up right here like this, and then I'll just slide it right into place, just like that. So easy you can do it by yourself. Oh. Hey, Jess. <laughs> Thanks for your help. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <You're> welcome. 
So for the corners, I have these two whole inch and a quarter straps. I'll place those on there, drill some holes, run some Tapcon screws in there, and that should hold it very nicely. I like it. A little washer action on that one. Whew. Well, I am losing daylight and losing energy, but I'm gonna go around and finish screwing in all those blocks. And the next step is gonna to be to bring in some wood chips once I have some wood chips and just line that floor with wood chips so it's not just dirt. Anyway, I really am impressed with this little portable garage. I really felt like it was not very good quality when I started putting it together. But once you get all the pieces in place um, and once you understand the directions fully, I, I, I swear I could put the next one up probably in an hour or less. But this has been several hours, not to mention recording it, but um, I didn't really thoroughly understand the directions when I started. I thought it would kind of make sense as I went along. Kind of a mistake. You know, you should really read the instructions thoroughly, get a full understanding of it, and then it'll go much smoother. I had made a couple mistakes. I put the side pipes on before I should have, so I had to take them back off. Um, I put uh, one pipe in the wrong position that was, you know, once I did it the right way, it made perfect sense. So it's a pretty good design. Anyway, if you need one of these for temporary storage just to keep things out of the weather, I think it's a good deal. $200 at Harbor Freight, and the blocks were like $1.70 a piece. And of course the Tapcon screws are pretty expensive, but uh, worthwhile because they're super easy to work with. Anyway, I recommend it. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a little kind of, I feel like it was kind of discombobulated, but maybe it, maybe it all comes together in editing. We'll see. At any rate, I appreciate you being here and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.